Uh, I'm Cara Kallewart. I will be talking about uh, how to teach and train in Unity. If you want to s explain or you n your knowledge about Unity to students. So it's basically when you listen to this presentation, after this presentation, you will be understand how you actually be a good teacher, successful at it. Okay. How can you write good books? How can you write good curriculum? Um, myself, I worked in game production for a long time. I worked on AAA games, but I also taught uh, how to make games. I actually own my own schools. I'm a certified instructor uh, for Autodesk, and that's where I had to learn how to teach. I took all courses on how to teach. Um, who from you is here a teacher? Raise your hand. Okay, several people. Who is a student? Raise your hand. Okay. And who works at the game studio? Okay. At the game studio, you have to transfer your knowledge as much as possible to the others to be successful about it. Okay. Um, just make sure. This might sound uh, seem as a very strange uh, first slide to show, but this is this presentation. This is this presentation about is how you teach somebody. And here you see the father is teaching the kid how to fish. But what do we see in this image is very important. Is we see the kid fishing, not the father showing. A lot of times when I go to a Unity course, they are showing me Unity, but I'm not making using it. And after the class, I saw it, but I cannot do it. It's all about being able to do. Now, another important element is I take a fishing class from my dad to catch a fish. Sounds totally strange what I'm saying here, but this is all related to unity. <laughs> There's a goal. I do this because I want to achieve something. I want to achieve a f catching a fish. And this is actually this exact the same thing with unity. When I go to Unity and take a course on Unity, I do not take a course because I want to learn Unity. I want to make a game. I want to be able to improve my game. I want to make a nicer game. That's why I take a course on Unity, not to learn buttons. There's nothing more boring than learning buttons and how to click buttons in Unity. But what I want to do is actually make a game. There are more and more games made in Unity, yeah, a lot of games. But as a teacher, you want to be part of that, or as a company, you want to be part of that. And how can you be successful if you work in team and teach others? If you make movie files about Unity to teach, if you make books to teach others, and in your company, you share your knowledge to, to make faster games. There are a lot of books now being written in Unity. A lot of movie tutorials. But my presentation is about helping you to do it better. I want to teach you and I explain how you can write effective curriculum, books and movie files. But also be able to teach a good class. Transfer your knowledge to somebody else effectively. And therefore you have to really understand who your students are and engage them in the class. And by making sure they're paying attention in your class when you teach something. But the ultimate goal is that you want your students to come back to your class. That's how you become a successful school, because they know it's good. People want to learn from you because you teach a lot. They want to be part of your company because you make good games, and they learn in your company. So I will be talking about a few elements during this presentation, we're going to talk about buttonology, the art of clicking buttons versus workflow. There's a big difference. We will learn about writing curriculum. We will learn about how to effective teach, eh? how we teach now in front of somebody, audience, how I teach to you. Okay? And how you pay attention to me. Okay? So when I speak louder, everybody starts to pay attention. Okay. But also learn a bit who is your audiences, who are students, 
Yeah. And then a little bit an advice for instructors. So the first thing I want to cover is the art of clicking buttons versus workflow. Okay. Clicking buttons is easy. I can teach my daughter of six years old how to use Unity. I can say, you click that button, click that button, click this button, and this button. But one thing she cannot do is remember it. Because she didn't learn how to do it. I just tell her to click buttons. If I would tell her how to make a fire and remember that, that's very difficult for a young kid. All I want, and when I teach, nobody wants to learn the sliders in Unity. They want to make a game. Always remember there's a goal. It's the same with teaching particles. When I would, in Unity here, open this, I open Unity 4, okay, create a new project, and I will teach you in buttonology how to use Unity. How to use the particle system in Unity. I say to you, eh, create a particle system. You do it. Okay, now I'm just going to go over all the sliders. Layout. Uh, here. <laughs> ah, you did, that's not visible. Okay, I'm going to try to make it visible. Okay, and then I'm going to use a slide here. So, what we see is we see all the sliders here, and I can teach what each slider means. Okay, and that's called buttonology. I teach the buttons. But the problem with that is, it's boring. I don't see the goal. I don't know why I'm learning that. When I would show a fire and explain exactly each slider, why an impact has on fire, then it's interesting. Then people will pay attention. If I go over just sliders, there's no goal. This is teaching buttons. This is teaching why I use the software. For people who are beginners and intermediate, it's very important. So, buttonology is not a good way to teach beginners and intermediate. Okay? But the best way to do that, and to make sure you don't do that, to teach a workflow, is by working from a goal. Thinking, as an instructor, what will I teach not, but, not buttons, not particles, but teach. Why will I teach this? Why will I teach Shuriken? Because I want to make an explosion. I want to make a rain. Huh? Why do I teach light mapping? The reason is because I want a nice lit environment. Huh? Why do I teach occlusion cutting? Because I want to teach to better performance. So always start from, the, from a goal and not from a button. When is buttonology still good? When will you teach a button? Well, if you deal with, with people who are very experienced in Unity, know a lot, they just need to know something very quickly to get them going. Okay. So in order to make a class very good, I'm thinking starting from the goal, why do I teach this? You will need to prepare it. And the best way is to create a lesson plan. Because a lesson plan will start to make think. You will have to write everything down. You really have to think two things. Why do I teach this? And how can my students show to me they can actually do it? That's all I care. I care when my student walks out of class that the students can't do it. If a student cannot do it, he will think, my instructor is very smart, he can show everything, but I cannot do it, it's too difficult. So that student will not come back to your class. He will not come back to your studio to work there, he is afraid. Because he says, I can never work in that environment. Okay. So that's why you always create a lesson plan. Let me show you one here. Uh-oh. Okay. 
So we have a lesson plan here. So we see here the image, the goal. We will be creating a 2D side scroller game. Okay. We're always going to use the word a goal. We're going to write our prerequisites, the description, objectives, then the learning cycle, the cycles. That means 12 steps, so the 10 steps to achieve this. Okay, like we're going to create first the 2D level. Then we will create a 2D bird. After that, we will create a 2D character. Then we're going to set up the animation. So, simple steps. And each step, I will describe, write the objectives, and write the topics. What I will do now is explain you what they exactly are and how you write it out. So, what's a goal? The goal, as you said, is the final thing that after the class the students have to achieve. This is mainly visual. You can show an image of, a, a, in this case, a 2D game. But I could show a 3D game. Or I show a fire. Or I show a beautiful game, beautiful light, where I'm going to teach about light. Okay? And you can always point out with a laser what you will teach. Okay. It could be maybe a prototype for a side scroller. We show it at the beginning of the class. Because then they know why they will stay until the end of the class. If you have students coming over to your class and they don't know exactly what they teach, then they're wasting their time, they will be very unhappy. Because if they know exactly what it is, they're going to pay attention. You want students that pay attention, not students that don't pay attention because they write a negative review about the teacher. Then we write objectives. The objective, as you can probably see, is you always start out with, after this class, you will be able to, to do. I want something that my students can do after the class. Okay. So those objectives have to be very clear, goal-driven, and measurable. What do I mean by that? Well, brief, make it short. They don't want to read a whole page what they're going to learn in class. One sentence. After this class, you will be able to create a 2D level with importing sprites. Simple to this point. And you show the image. Okay. Goal-driven, task-oriented. What does that mean? Well, task-oriented, you want to do something. They will be able to do it. It's not me talking about it. Another thing is measurable. What do we mean with measurable? Well, show me on the end of the class, what can you do? Can you do exactly the same? Create exactly the same as the goal I showed in the beginning. That's why I always use an action verb. An action verb is a verb in English that shows an action. I have to do something. Okay? Create. Demonstrate. Okay? Collect. Um, name. Okay? You will be able to name all the different optimization tools in Unity. You will be able to create a um, fast game, but good frame rate. You will be able to compose a cloud effect in Unity. So, there are some verbs you should not use. You will learn, you will understand, you will believe are not good words. Why? You will learn how to make a game. Learn, that means it's in your brain. But I want you to do it. I want to be able to measure. After the end of the class, I want to see that you can do it. Learn, understand, believe are not action verbs. So let's look 
and some good examples. You will be able to build a prototype game of a 2D side scroller just like the image here below. Okay, now I see visually what it is, the goal, but I know you will be able to do it to make this exact same. Another good example is you will be able to control a character from standing still to walking with the use of mechanism. I explained very precise what you will be able to do. And then on the end, I tell the technical term. If I would use a technical term, then I don't understand what it is. So, on my document, I wrote first the goal, then the objectives, and then the topic. What are topics? Topics are technical terms that I will be using during the class, such as touch input, unit setup, GUI, occlusion culling, light mapping. I don't really use that in the objectives, because otherwise my students, when they come in the class, and they hear, you'll be learning occlusion culling, I don't know what that means. Why would I stay? Let's leave. It's boring. <coughs> I don't want to learn about occlusion culling. I want to make a better performance game. So that's why we split it up. Okay. Here are some bad examples of objectives. Today we're going to learn about lighting. Well, there's a lot to learn about lighting. Is it three point? Is it light mapping? Is it programming? Be very precise so that your students, when they come to the class, know exactly I'm learning this. I'm going to stay. Or becoming a game developer. <laughs> this is so broad, it's not precise. You will learn about occlusion culling. <laughs> Boring. I don't care. I care about making a good game. Making them. What does it mean? I don't know. Why would I stay? You will understand optimization. Understand? I want to be able to do it. I want to be able to implement it in my game. <coughs> no. I always write also the pre Christmas. What should my st students be able to do before they come to class? Why do I do that? Two reasons. One. It's because I want to inform my students, hey, you need to be able to do this in order to come to my class, otherwise you have problems. But the most important element is for yourself as an instructor. Because then you have to think, which kind of materials do I need to prepare for my class? That's why you always have to think about that. And let me explain you a little bit why I'm very picky about this. If I go to a class and I walk in and my instructor walks in and he has not prepared to teach me a class on light mapping. Teacher comes in, what does he do? Opens Unity, creates a plane, creates a cube and puts the light in and then he tells me we're going to learn about light mapping. Okay, great. You just wasted five minutes of my life. Because I know how to create a plane. I know how to create a cube. I know how to create a light. Why are you showing me this? A prepared teacher will come in with a scene, with 3D objects already in the scene, with a light in, so I can open directly the scene and apply my light mapping. This is coming prepared to the class. Because you, would, you think, okay, I have to teach light mapping. What's light mapping? Why do they need it? Because I want to make a nice little scene. My students know already how to make a scene. And this is very important. Now, you have also a description. I write nicely in a few lines out what it is. To be more precise sometimes. But it's not so most important. The most important is your visual goal, your objectives, and your topics. 
So on my document, I wrote down the cycles. One, two, three, four. During the day or during the class, I write the cycles. I write kiss. That's not this. Kiss means keep it simple and stupid. I write, you will be able, hey, you will, we will make a bird flying. We will make our 2D character rocking left and right. Everybody understands that. Because they're goal driven for the industry. I do not write, you will learn input left and right. Uh, boring. This is, I don't want to do, make, make, do that in my life. Okay. But they have to be small and di digestible. Like maybe each time, five minutes, seven minutes long cycles. Why? Human beings can pay attention for about six, seven minutes. And that's it. That's enough. If I would ask you to look seven minutes to me and non-stop listen to my boring voice, I think everybody's asleep. That's why sometimes I rave my voice a little bit slower and talk a little bit funny because then you pay attention. Okay? So that's why I stop after five minutes teaching because then you have to do it. So, oh, sorry. Okay. So we saw a bit how to write a curriculum or document that you can give to your students when they come to class. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. That's where I'm going to stay. And that's why I will come to the next class because I see the next page. But let's talk a bit when the student enter the class and you will teach now. How do you teach? We don't teach buttonology. We don't teach clicking the buttons. How do you make sure your students can do it? When they walk out of class, they say, create an instructor, I know I can do it. I can't wait to come back to pay more, to buy his next book, to get his other movie file, huh? go, go work in that game studio, because I learn and I can make it myself. Well, when you walk in class, there's three components. The beginning, the middle, and the end. Simple. Let's explain them how they structured. In the beginning, I will show the students what I'm going to make. Here, this is my 2D scroller that we're going to make. That's the beautiful game we're going to make. That's the, maybe the AI will we make. Because I want my students to pay attention. And there's a few things I do. Right, first of all, this graph shows over time, from begin to end, I want my students to pay 100% attention. It's impossible. Maximum 85% non-stop attention. In the beginning, they're not paying attention. I want my students to pay attention. How do I do that? It's, Hello, everybody. Everybody will pay attention. Okay. And I show, maybe I have here. Yeah, I show the image. That's what I do. Wow, this is what I'm going to make? But don't show one image. Show five, ten beautiful images of similar games, of similar examples. And then say, this is exactly the one we're going to create. Because now I understand. It's been used in different cases. Use humor. Make a joke. Eh? So that everybody pays attention. Now in the main section, that's where I'm going to explain quick, quick, what we're going to do. Show it. But then I will demo it. I will show how to do it. I will take five minutes, go through every button, but not... The buttons are not important anymore. I see you flow. That's what we're going to achieve. We're going to import the sprites to make that level. We're going to move it, scale it, rotate it. Now I learn why I need to know moving in Unity or scale. Because I can make a level with it. If somebody says to me, we're going to learn how to orbit today a cube, well, nobody in a game studio sits there orbiting cubes. They're making a level. That's why they do it. And after that, our students will do it. Okay? That's the most important thing. Okay. And we call that technique learning cycles. We cycle through the learning. First, I show it. Right, first, we explain, we understand what we're going to do. Then I show it. And then you, as uh, students, will do it. And we keep on going like that. So in the lecture, when I start the class... I read my objectives, I show the goal images, 
I show examples, explain it. Then I demo. Five minutes, seven minutes is already very long because they don't pay attention anymore. He cannot remember what I showed in the first minute. I show maximum five to seven steps clicking that I have to do. In drag and drop Photoshop file in Unity. Drag and drop the Photoshop file on the 2D stage. Move it, take the next image, move it, scale it, snap. That's enough. Now I know why I do this. Okay. What's about if it's in a movie file or in a book? I don't see it much being applied. But a movie file. Imagine now you make a whole series of movie files of making a 2D game. Keep your movie files five, seven minutes long. No longer. Because I cannot pay attention. And after seven minutes, say, no, it's your turn to do it. Because of that, your audiences will do it and say, wow, those are great movie files. I can do it. I will buy more movie files. I will pay him to come to my school or my company to teach. Also, on the end of each movie file, I end with the screen of each step that he should do. Then I can pick at that. Okay, that's the steps I will do. I will find the buttons I need to do it. Because of that, my students will remember the workflow and be able to do it. They will go home and, wow, I can do it. The same with books. Write five, six, seven steps out and write in your book, no, it's your turn to do it. Try it and come back. Oh. Then, uh, okay. then the students have to do it. I will say, you have to do it. When the students are doing it, keep your mouth shut. Don't say anything. Let them do it. They are struggling maybe. But walk around. And now you can go check on the screen and see if they can do it. Because I asked them to make the exact same thing. No, I can measure them. No, I can give them marks and help them. And when they have a question, speak quiet. Be quiet. Explain it just to that person. Because you don't want to say, yeah, that's really stupid, Moran. Eh? That's how you do it. If you do that, everybody in the class knows it. You make that student very uncomfortable. Just help that person individual. Then, when the students are ready and have it done, I will do a conclusion. Okay? Conclusion is very, very important for two elements. One, I want them to pay attention again. Because, yeah, they can do it. Why would they pay attention to you? Bye-bye, Carl. I'm out of here. Okay? No. You want to test them if they know it. So I ask questions. Hey, can somebody tell me the five steps that we, how we achieved the 2D level in Unity? I want to test them. Okay, you want to be sure they can do it. Reinforce what they have to do to remember it. Well, what the most important thing about the conclusion is, is to sell them why to keep stay in class, why to come back next week, is by showing, look, next week we're going to create an interactive part. We're going to show you how to shoot the zombies. Then, whoa, there's more? I'm going to buy your next book. I will come to your school more. Because otherwise they don't know. They just walk out, bye-bye. It's the same with a book. Next book I will publish. Then they want to come back. Or you do a training at the studio. You go, and so you go to Neowis to provide a class on making them. But on the end of the class you can say an image. If you're interested, I can come back next week to show you how I put the lighting in that scene. That's how you keep your busy in the education of Disney running more and more. Or in a game studio, you tell them, your students or your staff, look, maybe come next week back during the break and I show this. Then they will learn how to make better games 
and team. Your studio will be more successful. Okay. There's a few elements I want to add to this. When you teach, you want that the students are all moving exactly the same speed forward. If I would have started to teach, I show it. One student starts to do it. What happens? I show the first step. Oh, first step, I do this. He's looking down. He looks up and sees step three. Then he will say, oh, Carl, I cannot do it. But he didn't pay attention. Okay. You want to be very clear to everybody, now you're watching me. And when they have to do it, I want them to do it, not to sleep. Because if they don't do it, then there's all different levels. And then, yeah, as an instructor, you have to run around and ask him, oh, please, hey, Carl, I cannot do this. You go crazy. So that's why you have to be very clear. You look at my screen and you do it. You are leading the class. You're moving the group forward. And how we do that is by using a technique called directional phrasing. What is directional phrasing? It's using I, we, and you. Okay, Let's see that. When I explain to my students we're going to make a 2D game or a 2D level, then I say, we, everybody here, all together, we will learn how to make a 2D game. We will, after this class, be able to make a 2D level. Okay. Then I, when I show, I want that everybody pays attention to me. They don't click on YouTube, on Facebook, trying to follow me and missing steps. No, I say literally, hey everybody, put down your mouse, look at my screen, look at the projector. I tell them very clearly the instruction. Then they, everybody pays attention and listens to all the steps I have to tell. Once I'm done, then I give permission to my students to start. I'm very clear. Okay? You remember the steps? One, two, three, and four, five. No, you will do it. Start now. Then we all move all the same speed forward to success. Okay. So what is now the most important in all that cycle? Is it me telling? No. But they have to pay attention. I make sure I raise my voice, move on the stage, change, is paying attention. Is it demonstration? They have to pay attention. But all I care is they can do it on the end. All I care, they will be able to do it. Because then they want to come back more. As a reseller, they want to buy more license then. So if I teach a class, of 45 minutes of unity. I talk for five minutes, then I show for five minutes, and then I let my students do it. Ten minutes, because they have to figure it out, try to do it, challenge them, and then I restart it. I continue. The next step I show, I explain, show, they do. Because remember, they can only pay five minutes attention to lose to look at how to do the steps. They will work on it. Now we create very happy students who will make really good games, and your school will be successful. Your book, people will buy, want to buy more books. Okay. Um, besides that, I want to quickly talk a little bit who are your students? What are, uh, how they behave, how they think? Because if you understand them, you will better be able to apply the techniques I told you and see why those techniques are important. First thing we have to remember, they have all the same behaviors, but they learn differently. We have people who learn better to listen or are slower or faster or take more time or want to do it four times over, sometimes one time. So we have to keep that in mind. And we will address that. Okay. So four elements is very important to our adult learners. Most of the people we teach are adults. They are not kids of 12 years old or 9 years old. Okay. First of all, is they have experience. They have worked in life. They have done something else. Or they have worked in the game industry. Or they worked with another software. That means they want to be heard. 
They want to share their experience. They want to talk about it. They want to challenge you. That's why I use conclusion questioning. I ask questions for a discussion so they feel embraced in it. In the lecture at the beginning, sometimes I ask questions to my students. Who has done this before? Hey, what do you think of that? Do you think it will improve? You get feedback from your students. Self-esteem, very important. When you go to a company to teach something new, remember, his manager or her manager is sitting there too. If you would say to that person, yeah, you don't know that? Well, they have something to lose. They could lose their job because of that. If you teach something, it has to be beneficial for them. There has to be a reason why I'm taking learning about particles. There has to be a reason why I want to learn about light mapping. That's why you make your lesson plan. You have to define, okay, who are my students? What do they know? And what's the goal? They need to know that from the beginning, so they know right away, is this class beneficial for me or not? Why will I stay? Self-direction. Adult learners can learn on their own. Don't be afraid to give them extra work or try to figure things out. Challenge them. Never say, hey, make a game, make something. Then it's not clear. Remember to stay clear with this and very precise. So because we have different learners, we want to challenge them. We want to get their attention. Let's ask questions. Okay. When you ask questions, hey, make sure hey, you do it for yourself. Hey, you want to be sure that they understand it. You, you, can, you check yourself if they understand it. But it's also engagement. And remember, it's always the instructor's responsibility to get the attention of the students, not inverse. The student, it's not, as an instructor, you cannot say, my students are not paying attention. Well, it's because, one, you didn't get the right students, you didn't do your homework, any bad teaching. Okay. Now, there's a lot of different kinds of questions you can ask. Okay. You can ask close questions like, yes or no? Do you understand it? Have you used it? We can ask open questions. Eh? Do you think you like it? Hey, is that, uh, in which case would that be helpful for you? Hey, factual questions, leading questions. No, I'm not going to explain all the different kinds, but you use them to use in a specific case. You can ask an easy question to a person who's shy, who's quiet. And that way you start to create a dialogue and get their trust. Or somebody who is non-stop talking, 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 ask a difficult question, shuts them up. Okay? You use those different kinds of techniques of questions to set the tone in your class but move forward. When students ask, answer a question, <laughs> always answer, uh, when the students, I'm sorry, when a student answers a question, always say, hey, thank you, great, and when it's good. When it's not good, don't say, no, that's stupid. <laughs> it's problematic. <laughs> what do you do is really simple. Ask the questions, but maybe, does somebody else think about that? What do you think? Engage the student to find the solution himself. Ask a counter question. Are you sure when I will do this that I get this? Okay. If a student replies a question, but like, hello, yeah, mumbles a question, ask them to sp speak louder. Tell them to say the answer again, again. If another student says, I didn't hear it, ask that student to say it. Engage them. Now, students will ask your questions too. And it's your art to respond to those questions. Okay? If you get a, a really good question, no, let's say, let's get a really bad question. What I have seen in a lot of cases is the person answers the questions, but the body language says something else. The body language is like, yeah, and you're rolling your eyes. Never do that. Your body expression is very important. We're going to talk more about that. So when somebody asks you questions that, are, that you know 
Are questions just to make you look bad? Simple answer as an instructor, let's discuss it out of the class. Don't make it difficult for yourself. If you don't know the answer, be honest. Of course, you can use techniques for that instead of, like, if you don't know, you ask the class. Who knows the answer? If you will do that every question, then it looks bad on you. You have to be knowledgeable. Um, and this is what I want to end with. I think the time is almost over. There's two pages on your body language and speaking. Okay. Your body language. Your body language shows a lot if you're interested in the audiences. If I would do my presentation here, and just like hanging on here, I don't show much interest here. Or I could be laying here, I don't show interest. Okay. As an instructor, I see a lot of instructors, they sit on a chair and they sit there. Hold the class. They sit behind the computer screen and they're just talking. No. There is a floor space here. As an instructor, stand up and walk around. Go see the work of the students. Show you're interested. Okay. Another element is what I see is some instructors are getting very excited. And they're talking with their hands in front of their face. No, I want to see the face with the facial expressions. Keep your hands on the side. Another important element is change. When I'm on the stage, and I'm just talking here, standing, like sitting in the class, talk, 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 everybody's like, <gasps> trying to stay awake. Well, the moment I stand up and I walk, Everybody's going to say, wow, something going on. I have to pay attention. That's why, as an instructor, on a regular basis, walk to the other side of the class. Because then you're going to pay attention to me. Okay? But also, you are paying attention to the different groups in the class. Because if I would be standing here, my whole presentation, I did my presentation just for you. Nobody else would have being paying attention anymore. That's why I go to there. And I talk a little bit to you. Give attention to everybody. Okay? And the last thing is my voice. My voice is the most important thing to bring in, in communication with my students. Change your voice. Hello, everybody. And everybody pays attention. Just use the intonation to get the attention of everybody. Also, remember this. When you teach in the morning, most of your students are awake. But if you teach in the afternoon, after lunch, most of you want to sleep a little bit. So, speak louder. Hello, everybody. Everybody's awake. Get the attention. Don't be afraid to change your voice. Because then everybody pays attention again. Okay? I, I just I wanted to make sure you were aware that your voice is a very powerful tool to get the people's attention, eh? to get the trust from everybody. Okay? I just want to end this because I think I'm almost finished uh, by thanking you that you pay attention. Okay? And I hope you learned a little bit how you write a bit curriculum and how you actually teach. Eh? Remember, Use a goal, show an image, what do you want to teach? Also, write your objective. Explain to your students, hey, the moment you come in this class, after this class, you'll be able to do this. Huh? And I hope you're going to use learning cycles. Talk and explain for five minutes, show it for five minutes, and let them do it for ten minutes. Don't click buttons. Never say click that button and I'm going to click this button. You click this button, I click this button. Because that teaching buttons and everybody can teach buttons. If you want to download the, the uh, curriculum example, uh, here's the link. And it's again here on the page on the bottom. Hey, but so what I, I, if you have questions, I will be available here afterwards. Uh, feel free to ask questions. You can always email me. Uh, you can always uh, Facebook me, LinkedIn. Uh, to contact me if you have more questions. Uh, we'll be coming back also to Korea. And if you're interested, you can contact Unity Technologies. 
Uh, we will be running workshops also on how you teach. We have done that before. And if you're interested, it's a two-day uh, workshop where we really do hands-on hands teaching you how to teach Unity. This will also be used later on in the certification, like to become a certified teacher. Okay. Uh, that's all. <laughs>